pilogram of hydronephrosis, plate 17. In the lower part of the opposite loin is seen the shadow of a lead-coated ureter catheter. Treatment. Slight dilatations of the renal pelvis up to a content of approximately 20 or 30 cc's require no treatment unless they are sufficiently infected to cause toxemia or unless there is kidney pain. If these symptoms are absent, such dilatations accidentally discovered during ureter catheterization may be noted but certainly require no treatment. On the other hand, retention of small amounts of urine in the renal pelvis, like similar retention in the bladder, may cause symptoms of considerable severity. Under these circumstances, it will be found that the ureter does not drain the pelvis well. Such hydronephroses are usually intermittent. The treatment of such cases should be determined after the nature of the obstruction has been studied by pyelography. If the ureteral obstruction is a kink, it can only be relieved by operation. If it is a stricture, it may be relieved, temporarily at least, by the indwelling catheter or by dilatation with ureter catheters of different sizes. Ureter stricture, like urethral stricture, may often be readily dilated and will sometimes remain dilated for years, but the patient should be warned of the possibility of relapse. Hydronephrosis due to urethral obstruction can usually be relieved by the cure of this obstruction, though in some cases a secondary ureteral obstruction will have to be dealt with surgically. Hydronephroses of larger content due to ureteral obstruction always cause symptoms and call for operative relief. This relief may be of two kinds, by removal of the obstruction or by nephrectomy. Such cases may be grouped into three classes. When both kidneys are affected and pyelography shows a type of retention that cannot be relieved by ureter catheter or plastic operation, the bilateral impairment of renal function may be such as to forbid the removal of either kidney. Under these circumstances, the only operation to be contemplated is bilateral nephrostomy. It may be often deemed wiser to do nothing. In a second class of cases, the hydronephrosis is unilateral, the function of the kidney reduced almost to zero, its parenchyma almost totally destroyed, and its pelvis pouched in a complex manner. Under these circumstances, one may well conclude that no plastic operation will really relieve the renal retention and that the kidney is scarcely worth saving. Nephrectomy is the operation of choice. In a third class of cases, the kidney is by no means totally destroyed and the ureteral obstruction may be more or less readily relieved. If the latter is due to nephrotosis, to stone, to contraction of the ureterovesical meatus, to kinking of the ureter by adhesions or over an abnormal vessel, the indication for a plastic operation is obvious. Such obstructions may be readily relieved with a large chance of success, but the prospect of successfully relieving the obstruction may be interfered with in several ways. Most important of these is the condition of the opposite kidney. If this is such that nephrectomy would seem inadvisable or unjustifiable, the operative indication must be very precise and the operator very sure of his success before any surgery is attempted. For the failure of a plastic operation under such conditions by condemning the patient to nephrectomy would perhaps condemn him to death. But if the condition of the opposite kidney is good, Almost any plastic operation may be attempted with the assurance that if this fails and nephrectomy is called for, this at least will not prove fatal. The various plastic operations that may be required for the relief of hydronephrosis are described in another place. The plastic removal of spurs in the renal pelvis caused by the so-called high implantation of the ureter in the kidney pelvis is not always easy of performance, and the resulting scar sometimes leaves the retention as bad as ever. An indwelling catheter should always be left in place at the close of such an operation. Transplantation of the ureter into the bladder is an even less satisfactory procedure. In spite of the most careful technique, the drainage is likely to be imperfect. 
the ureter often becomes infected. And in fully half the cases, the kidney, after going through a period of acute infection, at least becomes useless as an excretory organ, or at worst, suppurates so acutely as to require nephrectomy. On the other hand, the relief of hydronephrosis due to stone in the ureter or to adhesions and kinking about the ureteropelvic junction is one of the most satisfactory operations in renal surgery, while the relief of congenital stricture at the lower end of the ureter by cystoscopic incision of the ureter mouth is readily achieved. Elliot has collected the reports of 77 plastic operations upon the upper end of the ureter for the relief of hydronephrosis. 27 of them failed. 50 resulted in immediate successes, but only 11 of these were verified by subsequent examinations. In only three cases was the condition of the kidney verified more than a year after operation. Two of these showed a normal function at two and five years respectively. A third showed a somewhat diminished function seven years after operation.